Hi, and welcome back to more Exploring Trick Shots. I'm Will Maynard, and here's a small sample of the shots we'll see. Here are two easy-to-make shots that are all about the setup. Set up the one ball opposite the second diamond, and the cue ball two balls away from the cushion. Freeze the cue ball to the one and three, and line up like this to allow for throw. On this shot, freeze the cue ball to the one and the two, and freeze the three and the four, lining up all balls like this. Aim straight for the three. Here's a Mike Massey shot. Elevate the cue and play a firm stroke with high left English to jump the cue ball over the bridge and track three cushions to pocket the nine in the far left corner. Oh yeah, and while you're at it, make the three and the eleven as well. Here we can see that there's not much room under the bridge for a ball to go. So I have to place the three close enough to it so that when it's struck by the cue ball causing the three to jump as well, the three can still limbo under that limbo bar. Here's a practical application for this trick shot. You need to make the 14 but are blocked by the 4 and the 3 is frozen on the cushion. Aim center ball on the 3, elevate the cue, and hit down with a decisive stroke. A ball frozen to the rail when hit nearly face on with the cue ball will compress the cushion, then kick back, sending the cue ball on a predictable line. If the cue ball is a bit aloft on contact, it will gain more loft off the curved object ball surface. Here's one of my own. I am playing the three ball after contacting the nine and fifteen, which are both frozen to the cushions. I need to hit the nine about one millimeter right of center with low spin, which ensures an accurate rebound. The cue ball needs to hit the fifteen just right of center in order to carry them into the three. J. Howard Schoenmacher was nine times national amateur pool champ between 1913 and 1935. In 1935, a photo of him shooting this shot was in Collier's Magazine. The shot requires high enough hit on the cue ball to let the cue stick deflect up and away to avoid a double hit. It helps to elevate the cue. The 11 is there just to make the shot seem more difficult. An odd name for an odd shot. Place a trash can on the floor behind the near corner pocket. The three ball is balanced precariously on the pocket rim. The upright rack and the line of balls guard the pocket entrance. The idea is to send the cue ball three rails, hit the rack and leap into the air, knock the three into the can and fall backward into the pocket. You need Goldilocks speed. Not too slow, not too fast, but just right. Time to up the ante. Same shot with a cross side bank. I added a self correcting option on this shot so when the cue ball gets off line, the cushion is employed to get it to three. 
Whoa! I was warned about using the self-correction option due to the unforeseen side effects caused by the warping of the space-time continuum. I saw this challenge on a Facebook video titled The Real Hustle. Check out the link on the upper right of your screen. Place three balls together with a golf tee in the middle so that it doesn't touch any ball and put the cue ball anywhere on the table. The challenge is to knock over the golf tee on the hit. You can't knock the balls around the table and knock the tee over on the rebound. They said this shot can't be made, but let's explore it for ourselves. I varied the speed, the spin, and the hit angle, and I got nada. The only way I could figure the head ball to move forward and hit the tee was to hit the cue ball with draw and transfer some follow to the head ball. But an angled hit on the head ball will kick it left to right, and a hard hit will transfer less spin. So here's a medium soft hit. Hmm, promising. Ah, that's the ticket. A soft hit with follow is easy, but is this cheating? How about an aerial solution? Finally, let's knock the tee over without touching any of the balls. I like to call this shot, flip a silver dollar into a meerkat's hat. And with the help of my pal Henry, we hope to put a little smile on your face. Henry gets so excited. This is the yo-yo shot, a practical use of the Mass A. Hold the cue nearly vertical and aim along this line. Strike with a sharp stroke and follow through all the way to the table. Only in slow motion can you see why this is called the yo-yo shot. Two object balls are frozen to each other and the 14 is frozen to the cushion. Playing the 14 cross corner without moving the 4. This is another example of cushion compression allowing a ball to escape. Place two cue balls on the line connecting the corner pockets like this. Two players aim at each other's cue ball and shoot at the same time. The balls meet and rebound backward into the corner pockets. This shot is the two-man precision reaction shot. Since there is only one of me, I modified the shot so I shoot both cue balls from nearly the same starting point. I strike the first cue ball with high right English to hit two rails and try to get on line between the two corners. Then I strike the second cue ball with low spin aiming to hit the oncoming first cue ball head-on to pocket the cue balls in opposite corners. The challenge here is to bank the 11 in the near right corner. You will scratch in the side if you try to hit the 11 thin enough to bank it conventionally, but it can be made by hitting the 11 just a bit left of center causing a double hit with the cue ball. Here we can see the double hit that gets the 11 on the correct line. Here's a use of the side pocket point to make the 11 in the corner.
This shot requires a precise hit on the corner point. On this attempt, a very thin hit on the cushion allows the cue ball to barely avoid the pocket and the second point. You can see the cue ball starting to veer slightly away from the rail on the way to the target ball. It was successful, but barely, since I hit this shot with center ball. You really need high spin on the cue ball to help out. What's keeping the cue ball out of the pocket? The cue ball gets at least a half ball away from the rail, but topspin pulls it back to contact the rail before making the corner ball. Playing the 13 in the corner without moving the cue stick or the one ball. You can easily clear the cue stick with a downward stroke. The one ball in the way can also be cleared by the 13 if the cue ball strikes the 13 from a high enough angle. For this shot, place a cue ball in the head spot and a three ball on the foot spot. Now with your head turned so you can't see, make the three in the near left corner. This shot is tough enough when you're looking at it. Irving, the Deacon Crane, liked this shot enough that he often climaxed his show with it. Well, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching. I'll be taking a break from these videos for a while. I've played over 150 different shots in these 11 videos. I've learned a lot and I've had a lot of fun. I hope you have too. Thanks so much for being a part of it and for all your feedback. Be well, be safe, and be happy. So long for now.